Welcome to Bella in Your Business. My name is Bella Vasta, your host, and today I have a friend with me. Her name is Gelly Ackenblit, and she is, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to introduce her. She's amazing. I've known her for almost a decade. Um, interestingly enough, we met through a boy, um, and um, he connected us, and, and Gelly has started an incredible thing that Phoenix is very very fortunate to have. It's called networkingphoenix.com. She's going to tell you her story today, but we're going to talk all about networking. So I want you to listen up if you are that pet sitter who shies away from those networking meetings or those lunches or those breakfasts or those mixers, because today we're going to give you lots of awesome tips to help you. So without further ado, Gally, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And I love that introduction. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and fill in the gaps and explain to us, uh, in short, your quick story, because you do come from a very unique place and you didn't just like, you know, start this overnight. So tell us about your journey here. Yeah. So I, um, it, you know, I, I'm here from Phoenix locally and well, I'm sorry, no, actually, Gosh, where do I start? So I came from the former Soviet Union, yes. but I ended up in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh-huh. And so majority of my life was spent in Phoenix, Arizona. And after, you know, going to college here and doing the traditional thing, I had two jobs at a college and I was like, you know what? This whole job thing is not for me. Just couldn't, couldn't handle it, couldn't deal with it. Uh, mind you, I've been working since I was 14. But what I didn't realize is that, um, you know, I was a little hustler, like a little entrepreneur, and I never knew it, right? I didn't have anyone to guide me. I didn't have anyone to explain to me, um, you know, this personality trait that I had, which, mm-hmm. and I believe being an entrepreneur is a personality trait. For sure. So I, uh, long story short, um, during my second job out of college, I, it, it was just absolutely horrific. And so I started it was horrific for my soul, <laughs> to, just to clarify. So I started networking to discover other opportunities and not so much other jobs, but just to see what it is that other people do for a living. Like, what were my options? You know, and I was in my um, mid 20s at this point. So working was not an option, you know, or not working was not an option. It's not like I have money, you know, had money laying around. Right. So I started networking and I very quickly realized that I'm actually like in love with networking, right? Just completely addicted to networking. Um, it, finding people, hearing their story, um, connecting with them on a human level. Um, it, it just does something to me. Like my endorphins are off the charts, like dopamine pumps, can't stop smiling. I mean, it's just <laughs> right. I mean, it's just a thing. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. How do I turn this into some kind of an entrepreneurial venture. How do I make money with this? And I I didn't even use the word entrepreneur back then. I was like, oh, I need to make a business, you know? Never took a single business class in my life. Um, Didn't know anything about anything. My background is actually marketing and communications, though, which is um, what I do still on a daily basis. So people, not that anyone asks me if I use my degree, but if they did, I would say, yes, I do. (laughs) So so it was useful for me, but not so much in the business sense. So I... um, you know, do this whole networking, um, you know, I keep networking and I found holes in the market for opportunities, right? So first and foremost, um, there were so many networking events happening on a daily basis, but there wasn't a hub where they were all listed. Um, the hub was a word document that I compiled and it, um, it was literally copy, you know, copy and paste of where different events were happening, different fonts, different colors. I mean, it was like a big mess, right? And I would send this out to people because people would contact me and say, hey, Gally, you know where all the networking events are. Can you tell me? And I would send them this Word document. And then it dawned on me. Um, it's 2007. I'm like, why don't I just build a website? You know, and instead of me doing it, I actually at the time happened to be married to a software engineer. Go you know? figure. <laughs> right, go figure. And he wasn't just, you know, uh, a coder. I mean, this guy, in that sense, he happens to be brilliant. So I remember coming home one evening after a, um, an event and I said, I asked him if he could build me this calendar so we could list all the different networking events on the calendar to create this hub. Right. And he was like, yeah, you know, sure. Whatever. I mean, he was very supportive. So, um, long story short to summarize it, he ended up be, um, like taking my vision and building, uh, you know, this amazing online platform that to this day doesn't exist. It's unique to us. And what it does is it's a hyper local platform that is, um, specifically geared towards local professionals, small business owners, entrepreneurs, the hustlers, like, you know, the people that want to go out there and meet others like-minded individuals caters to that demographic. 
the goal is for them to go to the website, right? Because we have the hub of all the different networking events and to find which events they want to attend to connect with other people, right? So the, so it's like online, offline, you know, they find it online, but they actually have to go and meet people face to face. And so as of today, we have um, about 40,000 profiles that have been created on Networking Phoenix. Um, and the company will, it, like, is what, nine and a half years old. It'll be 10 years in January, you know, come mm -hmm. January 1st, 2008. Um and oh, by the way, little side note. So that is when we launched on January 1st, 2008. And if anybody watching this remembers what happened in the history back then, <laughs> but the economy crashed. Right. Economy crashed. And so sure. everybody w like landed on the website. So I happened to be, it was like a perfect storm, you know. Because and let's I back up, everyone was, everyone was looking for a job and they were using networking as a way to start connecting and find those opportunities in Phoenix. Yep, exactly. So I had no idea what I created. I, I literally didn't know. I didn't know how to make money. I didn't know anything. All I knew was that I, we created something cool. Everybody was using it. Um, it was like the hype of the town. And honestly, like not to get too cheesy about it, but I think it gave people hope more than anything. Oh, for sure. It was a great connector in the community. And it brought a lot of different things together where they were so separate. And um, so what was that aha moment where I think it's important that people understand because this is pivotal to pet sitting and dog walking companies where you have to build a community first. You cannot start selling or propositioning or pivoting or manipulating in a good way anyone or anything until you actually build a community. So tell us more about that turning point where so you built this community because people were starting to use you as a resource mm -hmm. to figure out where to go and you guys side note it is a really cool platform because you could be like i'm looking for lunch networking meetings in the north valley or mm -hmm. i'm looking for women owned business networking meetings you know it was really mm -hmm. cool how you could filter it mm -hmm. so now it wasn't just another chamber no offense to the chambers of course so, Gelly, how did you, how, when did you realize and how did you make that pivot from, all right, I have an idea and I have mm -hmm. a nonprofit kind of, and people mm -hmm. like it to making it an actual for profit business? Yeah, um, great question. So, I initially wasn't sure how we were going to make money with it, but um, I believe seven, seven months into it, I hired an assistant because it was just getting overwhelming. It was, I was in over my head. And so I hired somebody, uh, you know, with like my own money cause there was no company money. And what ended up happening was pretty much as soon as I hired her, I started making money because I was able to offload all this administrative crap off. Yeah. And we started making money with some of your basic stuff, like, you know, like sponsorships and promotions, um, events, like that kind of stuff. Um, we still do that, but the core revenue of the company now, just in case, you know, anybody is interested in the entrepreneurial side of things is the recurring revenue of memberships, right. right? Which is like the sexy thing. Now everyone wants to have a recurring revenue. So I built this before that was the sexy <laughs> thing, you know, like, and I'll tell you why I got that idea. I got that idea from Netflix. Remember when you used to rent Netflix DVDs? Yeah. And I was like, I want to do like a Netflix model where people pay right. me 10 bucks a month. And that's what I launched. I launched as 10 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Now it's twenty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. um, I find that like the cheaper your product is, the more headaches you have. Like people that, like people would complain about ten dollars a month nonstop, and yeah. I was like, you know what? We'll make it twenty. <laughs> and those people that are complaining aren't even going to have an option, and that's exactly what I did. And now I don't deal with those headaches. I mean, I yeah. I don't have anyone complaining. It's like, okay, if you can't afford twenty bucks a month, you can. I mean, you know, it's just whatever. That's a whole other conversation. But but it's um, good. I want to I want to pause you on that because a lot of pet sitters are also wondering about that. There's um, new technology actually coming into our space, like Rover.com, where you can kind of get an on-demand. It's kind of like Care.com for pets. Mm -hmm. And um, there is this whole pricing structure and theory thing going on right now in debate of if you're low or average, and I know there's no average in Networking Phoenix, but the higher you go, the less you got to deal with and the, yes. the better you work, you know? So, mm -hmm. and something else, um, so you had this reoccurring model of, um, of, of this Netflix type um, revenue. Um, what Gelly also had, you guys, was um, huge events four times a year at the time, oh, yes. four times a year. And those sponsorships from it, she would gain, what was it at the beginning? A thousand, 1500. I mean, like it, it grew to thousands. It was incredible. And she had whole teams of volunteers and it became like the place to be. So while everyone's at these networking events, Gelly, 
um, you have also become like, I mean, you are the networking queen. You have got tips coming out of your earball, your eyes. <laughs> so let's imagine that there's a pet sitter that's at this event. Let's start with what should they wear and what should they say to people? What, how, how should they act? Give us some tips that people could use at their own events in their own local communities. Okay, well, it is so funny that you asked me this question, you of all people, because what you may or may not know is that when I teach on this specific topic, I use you as an example all the time. So <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not. I remember <laughs> we talked about this, but I remember you came to one of my events. Um, if you've gone to many, but this one in particular, and your name tag that you were wearing, instead of having your name on it, it said, what's your pet's name? Yeah. Right? Because... Mm -hmm. Like when somebody first meets somebody, like they, they, what are the chances of you remembering their name? Like if you play the name game, they're good, but most of us <laughs> don't. So who cares about your name initially? And then you, you, you know, I don't have to tell you or the pet setters, like people love their pets. So like any opportunity to talk about their pets is going to be amazing. So you're basically inviting them with your name tag, asking about their pet name when they would run up to you and talk about their pet. And you're like, haha, I'm a pet sitter. You know, I don't know. And that's how you would reel them in. But. It is. It disarms people because the, the one thing that people don't like about networking events is they feel like it's skeevy and slimy and people are always trying to sell me stuff. And it really disarms people and just gets a, the natural conversation going, which I'm sure is one of your big tips just to have a conversation, right? That is absolutely. That is my biggest tip. Like I like small talk is not my thing. I like to have a real yeah. conversation, you know, and you might, you may want to start with a small talk. I mean, cause you can't walk up to somebody and say, so, you know, I see your aura is purple. You know, I mean, you, you actually could say, I would say that, you know, just, and I like to say things just, just to trip people up because then they're like, what, like, what did she just say to me? You know? And then it gets a real conversation going because it throws them off their script. Right. Because all of us have a script, especially going into a networking meeting. We're like, okay, I have to be super professional. I talk about my company. I have to show people how credible I am as a professional. You know, the list goes on and on and on. And it's just like, no, just be yourself. And one of my biggest tips I tell people, all you're doing is you're looking for friends with professional benefits. Yes. Right. Exactly. Don't repeat that. Totally. Friends with professional benefits. So you're literally just looking to connect with people like you would with friends, you know? Uh -huh. And if there's, you meet somebody that you don't like, it's fine. Move on. Like you don't have to be friends with everyone. You're not going to connect with everyone and vice versa. Somebody may not like you. Great. Okay. Moving on. The biggest thing is trust. They have to trust you, especially if they're going to welcome you into their house, yeah. you know, leave you with their pet, who's probably their baby. You know, they probably like their pet more than their kids. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so, that, so you really have to gain the trust. And the way to do that is by being real sharing, um, real things about you, you know, who you are as a person and, um, you know, like small talk is okay, but like, but if you can really get to the core of a good conversation, you're going to leave them with an impression. They're going to remember you. And that's how the relationship starts to build. Yeah. That's fantastic. I hope you guys are all listening to this and taking good notes. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, Gelly, I'm going to have you tell us some things we shouldn't do, like top five things we shouldn't do. Maybe we'll be right okay. back. <laughs> And we're back and I have Gelly Eckenblick and we are talking all about networking today and what kind of tips you guys can all take home to your local communities. Networking doesn't have to be a big scary thing, especially, and you don't have to work the room. The room can work you. But mm -hmm. let's, um, before we actually even get there, Gelly, tell us a couple of things that are just not right that people do. <laughs> Well, one of my uh, pet peeves is the person, and I'm sure we've all seen this if we've been to a networking event, but the person running around the room and shoving their cards into everyone's hand, like mm -hmm. without even a conversation, without even saying hi, like literally they're just handing out, it's just it's like a Pez dispenser. And it's like, okay, what do you want me to do with this? Like, where's the, I can't find a trash can fast enough <laughs> when that happens, you know? And that is an absolute, um, do not ever do this, please. Like you will be automatically banned in everyone's mind. You know, that that's a horrible thing to do. The other horrible thing to do is to collect people's business cards and then add them to your spam list, you know, and then start <laughs> sending them, like adding the people to your, um, newsletter without permission or like sending them, so, you know, unsolicited emails. Like that's actually legal. Like you cannot do that and you will be marked as a spammer, you know? So please don't do that. Um, <laughs> A few other big don'ts. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, don't monopolize people's times. 
you know, like, like if you, um, get to an event and you start talking to somebody, it does it like 10 minutes is a good conversation. And then you say, you know what, it give the con- if you, is there a genuine connection, grab their card, follow up and continue the conversation outside because you want them to have the chance to work the room. You want to be able to work the room. They might get really irritated with you. If you um, take up all that, I know I get irritated with people. I'm just like, okay, like, I, like, can we talk about this, you know, later? Um, the point of the event is to make connections uh-huh. outside of the event is when you start to build the relationship. So right. do not monopolize people's times. Right. So those would be my, um, top three. What about uh, selling? Things. How do you feel about, you know, landing that client right then and there or getting that, um, consultation scheduled or is, is networking a time to sell? Oh yeah. Great question. So, um, if somebody quit my networking passport program one time and we allow people to, you know, uh, in the survey, let us know why they quit. And, you know, here she, I don't know, is an anonymous put in there. I'm quitting because no one wants to buy my product at your events. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, golly gee, if you find events where everybody's willing to buy your crap, tell me I want to go to those <laughs> events too. I mean, people don't even want to buy my memberships at my events, you know, yeah. like, so um, what, uh, we, 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 that is such a wrong mindset because no, you're not there to sell. You are there to make friends. You are there to network. Right. You're there to make connections. And I think here's where you've got to open up your mind a little bit when you're networking and building a professional network. It is not just for your current situation. Yes. You know, you may be a pet sitter in the moment, yes. but maybe in two years you sell your business and you're doing something else. But guess what? You get to keep your network. Yes. You know, if you build it properly. So you have to remember that you are looking for key people, amazing people that could be a part of your network as you grow, as they grow. You know, it is not just in the moment. You're not just out there hustling for clients. I mean, I get it. That's the end game. You know, we, we need clients, but um, if you're going to do it, do it right. Because otherwise you're going to get frustrated with it. It's not going to work for you and, um, you're not doing anyone a favor. You touched on such a great point there. It's, it's about the mindset and your goals that you set forth when you actually go to one of these meetings. If it is to land a client or get a new client and you can say networking doesn't work, no one wants my services or this BNI group or this chamber group or whatever it might be, your, your goals might be a little bit off. So, so I have, I've made some of my best friends through networking. I know you have too. Um, we're going to hang out tomorrow night. It's actually a networking event, but it's a chance for us to also hang out. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's, that's a lot of what it is. You guys, it's, I remember back in 2008 when you were saying that, um, I met some people at your event and a lot of pet sitters know I created this gift certificate program. What that was, Gal, it was, um, I had a bunch of people I knew that were all looking for more customers and the pizza guy would give a free slice of pizza. The car wash guy would give a free car wash. The wardrobe consultant would give a free consultation for a half hour. So every new client of mine got $1,500 worth of free services and I had all these gift certificates because these other people wanted to be connected, you know, and the clients loved it. The vendors loved it, you know, so you just never know how you can make relationships or right now. I mean, Gelly, you invited me to an incredible event about a month ago and the contacts I made there are just amazing. And what they're doing for my life and my next pivot right now that's happening behind the scenes is incredible. And it's just making new friends. It's exactly what Gelly says. So I, I want our listeners to think about next time you go to a networking meeting, how many people are you looking to meet and what kind of relationships are you looking to build because you don't like get married the first night, right? You don't have a one no. night stand. Like it's a dating relationship. This is just like dating. Gotta get all right. So Gelly transitioning to all right, we we went, we met some really great people. We didn't hand out our cards like a Pez dispenser, but we did meet some people that we'd like to follow up with. What does a good follow up look like? Okay. Amazing question. Because let me tell you, if you do everything right and you go to the van, you have amazing conversations, you really connect with people, but you don't follow up. Nothing happens. Complete waste of your time. I mean, maybe you had a good time, but (laughs) nothing's going to happen, you know? So you really have to follow up, you know, and you've got to create a strategy and how you want to follow up with people. So, um, a very simple one I can tell you is if you come home with 10 cards, um, either at the event or immediately as you come home or to your office, put, um, you know, create a system like A through D, you know, who do you want to follow up first? You know, I'm literally just writing the card, you know, A, B, C, D. Um, the reason for that is because 
if you actually have the time to sit down and follow up with every single person, I mean, that would be ideal. Um, that's what I would suggest. And you have about 72 hours, which is three business days to follow up before the connection starts to fade. And if you can't follow up with everybody immediately, then at least follow up with your A's. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times what I do, honestly, like, you know, I mean, we all have our cell phones next to us all the time. So when I'm at an event, um, and I even, I did this a number of times at the event you and I were at, oh, yeah. um, you know, the one you mentioned, I got my phone out, pulled up my email, um, and sent that person an email, you know, CC'd myself in the subject line said, here's my contact info, let's connect. And so that way, when they got to their inbox, my email was already in there. They already have my contact and then I have, have a copy in my inbox and it, inbox and it just reminds me to connect. Right? And the, yes. this, these are the A people. These are the people I really want to build the connection with. And then of yeah. course I go to Facebook, you know, and I try to connect with them on Facebook. Um, you know, if they're open to that and I, keep in mind, a lot of the people that I meet are, um, they're influencers. So they are open to connecting, you know, not everyone's going to be open to connecting on Facebook because not everyone uses Facebook for, you know, business. So you have to be kind of, you know, careful with that. Don't be offended Um, if they don't accept your friend request. (laughs) Absolutely. Don't be offended. And I personally don't accept many people's friends because I've way, I have over 2000 friend requests and I don't know a lot of those people. And if I accept them all, then I'm going to hit my limit. And anyway, so I accept people when I actually get to know them. If we have a conversation, then, you know, I'm happy to accept them. That's my personal strategy. And then, but LinkedIn is a good one. You can connect with somebody on LinkedIn. And here's the other thing you have to remember, um, rule of seven. This is a big one. So Um, This is an old advertising agency rule, but they knew that when they released a new product or a new brand, the consumer needed to interact with it seven times before it started to resonate in their mind. So it is absolutely the same with people. When you meet somebody initially, they don't like they need to have seven interactions with you before they start. You're part of their conscious awareness. Okay, so again, do not be offended if somebody doesn't remember you or if they don't you know, accept you immediately that their brain is just not quite firing maybe on who you are yet. You know, that's okay. So remember seven times. So you met that's once, um, you send a follow-up email. That's two. You connect on LinkedIn. That's three. Maybe you have engagement on Facebook. That's four. You know, maybe they have a page, maybe you invite them to like your page, you know, Mm -hmm. um, maybe you see them again, maybe you leave them a voicemail. But my point is like, it is not difficult to have seven touches with somebody. So they actually start to, you know, both of you start to get on each other's radar and especially Especially with with social media. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, you bring up a really great point because admittedly I've been out of the networking scene for a few years now. Like when I had a baby, I kind of like, you know, checked out, but Mm -hmm. these are really great social media tips that I didn't even, I mean like the email one I kind of thought about, but think about it, you guys, just a quick like on their Facebook page or sharing something that is valuable that you like. I mean, you have to be authentic about it, right? You're not going to like share something widgets to your pet sitting community, but like, (laughs) you know, something, uh, Gelly, this is good girl. I like it. So it's not (laughs) just a, Hey, when would you like to meet for coffee? You know, like, right. Like getting into that, like date date. It's like, it's like Tinder swipe left or right for a little bit. It is. What do you, what do you call networking Phoenix? It was something if match.com met yeah, if LinkedIn and Match, uh, or not Match, Meetup. If meetup. LinkedIn and Meetup.com got together and had a baby, it yeah. would be Networking Phoenix. It would be yeah. my platform, which we are. I am working on actually taking nationally. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, for those that are watching that are not local to Phoenix, we hope to have one, you know, in your city within the next few years. So, yeah, that'll be amazing. You guys, it's just, it's such a great platform. I don't want to brag on it too much because, haha, I have it. <laughs> the rest of the country doesn't really. But, um, Kelly, You have been just a wealth of information and um, a lot of really great ideas. Um, I think the takeaways are really just be normal, like be a person, get to know someone and person first, business second. And um, I didn't know that you (laughs) use that that name tag thing, but you guys use that name tag. And next time you have a networking meeting and it's, hello, my name is, put what's your pet's name and just start Mm -hmm. talking to people about things that matter to them. And if you like them enough to actually connect with them, don't think of them as clients. Think of them as they might be able to connect you to someone who can connect you to someone who can connect you to someone. And all of a sudden you've got this big network. You have no idea. Sometimes having no idea is better than having a goal. Yeah. And that's the thing, not, you know, every single person you meet isn't going to be your target demographic. Well, for instance, I don't have a pet, you know, so I wouldn't have a need for a pet sitter, but I have many friends that have pets, right? you know, and I would be happy to refer somebody if I like legitimately trusted them and said, you know what, this is somebody that you should talk to. So that's the other thing to keep in mind is that, 
you know, especially for the pet sitting business, um, yeah. you know, the, it's, they, they have to like you and trust you. So you literally even more than anyone have to come off as a loving, you know, <laughs> sweet person that's going to take care of their pets. So like, you have to be that persona. Like it's not about your business part. It's not about your expertise. It's like, are you going to comfort my, you know, puppy when I'm, you know, out of town? And it's yeah. like, if I feel like you could be the puppy's mom, then yeah, I'll refer <laughs> you to my friends, you know? Of course, so, yeah. But yeah. I love it. I love it. Other things like you could meet someone who might be your future lawyer. I've, I've used lawyers that I've met at networking events. People are always asking me, how do I find lawyers? And I'm like, who do you know in your area? You could also meet other influencers or even people like Gelly, people who are organizing the event, shoot them an email, tell them you're going to be there, seek them out, go talk to them. If you ever need to be connected to someone, you now have that open relationship where you can say, Hey, do you know someone who, and when you are looking for a designer or a CPA or something that's local to you that you want to hire locally and look in people's eyeballs. These mm -hmm. are great ways to do this, you guys. And this is also helping build your business. Mm -hmm. So Gelly, it's been such a pleasure with you. How can uh, people reach out or follow you if uh, they wanted to just, you know, catch your aura? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, great question. So um, they're more than welcome to, like if you go to gelly.com, which is my, my consulting website, there's an easy contact form and it comes directly to me. Yeah. Um, of course, they can always reach out on Facebook. Yeah. Um, you know, I get messages through there and I tell people I'm the most stalkable person on the internet. Like it's like, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's absolutely beside me when people say I couldn't get a hold of me. I'm like, what do you mean you couldn't get everyone else can get a hold of me, but you can't, <laughs> doesn't make sense. So literally you just Google my name and there's like a million ways to get a hold of me. And I check everything. Um, except not when I'm on summer vacation, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when I'm not on summer vacation, I check everything. And so, it's yeah. Gelly, G-E-L-I-E. -E. Um, yeah. Gelly, you mentioned really quick. So if anyone's listening and they do want to do a consultation with you on networking, mm -hmm. tell them what that's, that's about. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think would, this would be it, really helpful actually. Yeah, it's different. It looks different for everyone, honestly. But yeah. um, and especially, you know, if they are local, obviously, um, I know the local scene. If they're not local, you know, that'd be a little more legwork for me. But um, I help people put strategies together. You know, I could put we could put together like a six to 12 month strategy that then they, they end up following, you know, and yeah. it's like literally a roadmap, you know, yeah. and, and that's what I do. Because here's the other thing to, to know. It's like I built this network, but right now I'm building a whole other network and a whole other level. And I'm using my own techniques. I literally put out a Google Doc. I live in Google Docs. <laughs> and I create columns. Mm -hmm. These are the people I'm trying to get to. How do I get to these people? Who knows them? Who's going to introduce me? All right, I got this meeting and this meeting. This happened, that happened. And that is exactly what we do, you know. So I, I build strategic. everything through networking. And that's what I can help people with. That's one of the things that I do. So, yeah, if anybody is interested, they can, again, gelly.com, G-E-L-I-E.com. It gives you all the information and we can go from there. I love it. Gelly, it's been such a pleasure. You guys, don't forget to share this podcast or like us on iTunes or Stitcher. And remember to always keep jumping.